We've been learning web development from the very beginning, and if you've missed any of the other videos, I'm putting a link to the full playlist in the description below. So in this video, we're gonna cover CSS selectors. So here's a CSS rule, and it consists of three parts. The selector, which says, hey, what elements on the page are we actually going to be changing? And then you pick some properties on those elements, and you change the property values. That's a CSS rule. All we've done so far is use selectors that target elements by tag name. So this applies to every body tag on the page, every UL on the page, every LI on the page. But this will run into problems and I'll show you why. Let's say we have two sections here and we wanna do a layout. I'll do a really quick Flexbox layout. Sections get display flex. The default flex direction is gonna be row. I'm fine with that. Uh, let's go section divs. Uh, they're going to get a background of gray, a width of 100%. Let's go ahead and save that. Yeah, looking pretty good. Let's give them a margin of one pixel here. So that way we can kind of see the delineation between the sections. Okay, this works great uh, until I want to make these bottom ones red. Well, how do I make these bottom ones red? Um, if I change this to red, then they all become red. Every div inside of a section on the whole page becomes red. So what I have to do is I actually have to target uh, only the divs that are down here. Uh, so we do that with CSS classes. But before I jump into classes, let me show you just a little bit more about basic selector rules and how that works. So we've added a space here. And whenever we add a space, it says, hey, let's look inside of what's to the left of it. So that space means let's look for divs inside of sections. You can keep going here. You can say divs inside of divs that are inside of sections or UL, LI, A. This would be any A that's inside of an LI, that's inside of a UL, that's inside of a div, that's in a div, that's in a section. It's a pretty complex rule, but you can go as long as you want. Uh, you can also do a comma and say this is going to apply to more than one selector. But let's say we also want them to apply to any A tag on the page. So there we go. Now we have A tags on the page. Uh, they're also getting the gray background. Uh, and any section divs on the page also get the gray background. So you can do commas. You can do as many commas as you want. We can make this apply to the body as well. Now the whole body gets a background color. You get a background color. You get a background color. So that's kind of how the commas work. Spaces and commas. That's your basic selector rules is you can add spaces to say look inside. And you can add commas to say, oh, we're going to do this as well. So let's look back to the class problem. What you can do down here is you can add classes to your HTML uh, class equals. And then anything inside of here is a class. Let's give this class, let's call it a feature box. You can't use spaces in your class names because whenever you use a space, you're giving it a second class as well. So this will be, this will have two classes, feature box, and we'll call the sales. Um, you can add it, you can add it before. You can add it sales here, sales space feature box, or feature box space sales. It does not matter. Whenever you add a space, you're adding a second class. And you'll see what that means here in just a moment. Um, let's give this one here a class. This will also be a feature box, but this one will be closeouts. So we have two feature boxes, our sales feature box and our closeouts feature box. And now we can target them. So we can say, uh, let's go up here, uh, section.featurebox. So this is any section with a feature box class inside of it. Doesn't matter if the feature box class is second or first. If it has a feature box class, it's going to get this rule. Uh, and then also you can say any section feature box div gets these rules. So nothing changed because we're still targeting this section and this section. Uh, but now what we can do here is feature box dot sales. We're going to only target sections that have the class feature box and the class sales. You'll notice I did not add spaces here. Space would say, let's look inside of section for any element with a class of feature box and sales. We don't want that. We want only section elements with a class of feature box and sales. We want these dots to apply to the section element so we connect them to it. So now you notice that only the first one caught those rules. All of them up here, every section feature box is display flex, but only the ones that are feature box sales get that background color. So now I can kind of copy and paste and let's say feature box closeouts. They're gonna get a background color of red. 
and boom, we've solved our problem. Uh, another thing though, is we've actually copied some code. There's this rule in web development, D-R-Y, dry. Don't repeat yourself. You'll hear people say, I need to dry this code up. That means that we're copying and pasting some things here that we have to maintain. What if we wanna change this margin to two pixels? Well, now we have to find every place where we set our margin to one pixel and we have to change it. That's not good. We need to dry this code up. To dry this code up, it's pretty simple. Let's just say every dot feature box div, every dot feature box div will get these two rules, boom. And then only the sales divs and the closeouts divs get the rule, the color specified. So that's gonna do the exact same thing, but it's drier now. If I wanna change the margin to two pixels, I only do it in one place. And while it's not a big deal right here, it's so easy to get your code copied to where this little margin one pixel is in a hundred different places of your website and you don't know where it is. Another way we can clean this up is we no longer have to specify section here because dot feature box does it all. There's not any other places on our website that are gonna have dot feature box in them unless we want them to be a feature box. So we can get rid of the section and look, our code kind of reads a little easier now too. Feature boxes get display flex, any divs inside of feature boxes get this kind of layout and specific feature boxes have different background colors. That's how you target with classes. Classes, you can have as many of any of them on a page as you want. The other way that you can target is with IDs. IDs get ID equals, um, and we could give it something, let's call it Frank. Um, and ID Frank, you target that by saying pound Frank. So anything with ID Frank, let's give it a font size, 200% font size. Uh, the problem with IDs is you can only have one of this ID on the entire page. Doesn't matter if you add another ID Frank down here, that is illegal HTML. It might work fine. Yep, you can see Google Chrome actually handles it okay, but you don't know what you're gonna get on different browsers and different devices because that's technically illegal HTML. Uh, so IDs, usually you can get by by doing class names and you don't really have to do IDs. Stay away from it unless you find a really good reason why you need to do IDs, but classes pretty much will always get the job done just fine. So that's how you use class names to specify certain things. Um, and again, you can use comma and do a whole bunch of other specific things. We want feature box closeouts to be read. Uh, we also want, I don't know, non feature box. Is that a thing? Probably not. Non feature box dot closeouts to be read. Basically anything closeout divs, we want them to be read. So you can add commas and target multiple things on your page. I'll leave you with one more thing. There's, there's a decent bit more that you'll learn ongoing with CSS selectors. You don't have to know it all now to become a web developer. Uh, so one more thing that I will show you is that the web page provides you things that are called pseudo classes, P-S-E-U-D-O, which means kind of pretend classes. Uh, so pseudo classes, uh, this one would get a pseudo class of first child. This would get a pseudo class of last child. First child means that if this is a parent element, the first element in there is a first child. That's this LI right here. And the last one inside of that parent element is a last child. So I could target all first child LIs, which is just this home one and give it a special background color. I do that by doing a colon. Colon means I'm looking for pseudo class. There are some pseudo classes provided. Uh, let's give this one a background color of red. Boom, you can see my first child got a background of red. If I change this to last child, then I last child got a background of red. Where this is useful is when I wanna do some things like, hey, let's uh, give these things a background color. Let's give them all a background color of gray. Let's give them rounded corners. So now they're doing that, oh, well, 10 pixels, that's huge. What on earth was I thinking? Let's try three pixels. Let's give them some padding. Uh, let's go ahead and give them some spacing. Margin left of 20 pixels. They're kind of spread out a little bit. Ah, but I don't want this first child to be bumped over and that's where first child comes in. First child will have a margin left of zero. 
And now it bumps over and I've got the spacing carried out. This is like the ugliest navigation of all time. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Uh, but it gets the point across. Sometimes you only want to mess with the first child in your layout in order to keep your layout looking the way that you desire. So first child is out there. Uh, there's also ones that are active. Active, this is if your link is active right now. So if I'm on the home page, I can make this home page not be underlined. I could say A colon active. Uh, that's going to get text decoration none. Of course, that's not going to happen because I'm not on the home page right now. I'm on one called test.html. Um, I could say A hover. This is a really fun one. Hover gets a text decoration of none. So whenever I hover over a link, it gets a text decoration that goes away. Uh, although usually you want to do something that's the opposite. You want to say a text decoration is none. And whenever you hover, it gets underlined. So now all the text decorations go away. And when I hover, ooh, they get a little underlined thing going on. Nice. Or I could say that um, any li hover uh, gets a background color of red. So whenever I hover over one of these, the background color flips to red. So that's how you get some fun little useful interaction using pseudo classes uh, that the HTML page provides for you. I'll leave you with this for now. Like I said, there's plenty more that you can learn ongoing, but these are the ones that give you a lot of ammunition to build out the rest of your page. In the next video, we're going to go back to the web page we've been building and add images and wrap it up and really make it look nice and lovely because you guys have already learned quite a bit about HTML and CSS. Let's have fun with that video.